Good morning. All right. All right. Good morning. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to talk as loud as I just said good morning. I'm going to talk like about this loud just because I want to try to really want to try to teach this morning. And uh, also, I just feel like my voice is tired a little bit for whatever reason. Um, I want to stay in the atmosphere of giving for a moment. Um, you know, we may, may, maybe you gave this morning. Um, most people gave this morning. Um, but there's, there's, this, there's this noise that has been, I've heard a, a lot lately, and that has to do with uh, this scripture. I'm going to read it to you. And it's an oh boy mentality. Okay? Oh boy mentality. John chapter 6, verse 9. Here's a boy. Here's a boy. He has five loaves and two small fish. But what difference will this make among so many? I want to stay in this moment of giving for a moment and ask the question, ask, have I been in an oh boy mentality? Oh boy, what is, you know, what is this among so much? What you have in, in your hand. Um, if you've went grocery shopping or if you've went uh, wherever, you might have thought, gosh, things are getting pretty expensive. Or, man, it's not going as far as it used to. What is this among so many? And it changes our approach to where our strength becomes our finances. It really just reveals where our trust is. That's, a, that's the reality. It reveals where our trust is. When I have an oh boy mentality, oh boy, instead of looking to heaven. And if you'll put back up that verse, or not that verse, but that, de uh, that declaration. I believe um, there, okay, I know I'm going to be feeding back a little bit, but I believe that there is, uh, the Lord is smart. And he's out ahead of us. Just like John the Baptist, he sent ahead of Jesus. Just like how uh, Pastor Austin was talking about how we pray there before we go there. Um, there's been some words spoken very diligently in this house, right here, for the last six, eight months. And it has to do with our source. Father, today we pause to reflect and say thank you. We recognize you as the loaves, the fish, the job, the savings, the Lord. The Lord is our source. And it's important that we remember where to give thanks. When you have, and I have, an oh, oh boy mentality or that oh boy wants to come out, I challenge you just to t change your direction and just in the middle of the store, I don't care where you're at, in the middle of the car, thank you, Lord. And Jesus lifted it to heaven. You know, it wouldn't have been enough in the disciples' hands. But it was enough in the Lord's hands. And I'll tell you what, that's, that's, that's an important thing, an important place to be. And that's also an important thing that we re remember when we bring our tithes to the storehouse. This is covenant talk. It's covenant. If you're not in a covenant with the Lord, well, I do feel a little bit sorry for you. Because you will, you will be limited. To you. That's a, that's, a, that's a place I don't want to be. And, um, and so this is a, these, these moments of, of giving, it's, not, it's, it's a precious time. It's not to keep lights turned on here. I don't know if you know this, but we, have, we don't owe any debt on anything. This church has been debt free for 10, 12, 14 years. It's not, not a dime is owed on anything. Um, I was talking with Landon the other day, and, uh, and do you know in the last probably eight years, we haven't raised money for really anything other than if we're going to give to somebody at Christmas or because we've stewarded finances. But that doesn't negate the responsibility or the covenant that you would extend or, you know, covenant talk on your part. And right now, I mean, I just uh, uh, giving has been down the last uh, probably four months. Pretty, pretty substantial compared to where we were last year. Um, however, uh, we have plenty of money in our account, and we have $400,000 in another account. Um, I'm not concerned about finances. My heart is going out to you. Amen. 
this morning. And as long as I'm just by myself in my approach, I'll struggle, I'll fear. Um, I won't be the light, I won't be the salt, I'll be limited. I won't be able to be a blessing or to serve my generation. When the Lord wants to speak to me about being generous and bringing refreshing to somebody in a time when many people don't understand or haven't been taught the word and, and don't understand the covenant they have in him, I won't be able to be that to them. Because what holds me and what I serve is not the Lord. It's the dollar. And Uncle Sam is limited. But our king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords is not. So we changed the picture of, to, of, of source this morning. So I just wanted to make that adjustment. Uh, I didn't have this planned in any way. This just popped up in my heart right before I walked up. Just, just to make a turn of a dial. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, just quiet your heart, quiet your mind. Just close your eyes. Father, today where we... Well, let me pause. Let me pause. I want to read a passage, and it is in my notes today. And then, no, I won't. You'll hear it later today. The Bible says, where there's sin, or where I stand and oppose the Lord, he said, there is no peace. There's no wholeness. What I was about to pray and I will pray, is that any place that I've been missing it, Lord, show me, and I'm going to make that adjustment to come under you. But for me to pray that, and for maybe you to not know that it, it matters whether or not you make that move, because if you don't make the move where you know the Lord's dealing with you, you are saying, I don't want peace, peace being wholeness. I, I want the waves and the wind and the tossing, not just on the outside, but on the inside. The Bible says the wicked, the wicked are. It doesn't say they are in a storm. It says they are like the storms of a sea, muddy, turbulent. It doesn't say they're in the storm. It says they are the storm because they, they refuse to come under what God says. It's interesting. When I refuse to come under what God says, when he's dealing with my heart, you know, and that's the thing. You can lie to your heart, but your heart won't lie to you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit bears witness with your, your spirit. That you, This is where. And when I don't yield to that, I'm actually putting myself in opposition to the Lord. So you can rest assured, and I'm going to make this declaration to you this morning, and this is like a, a, almost like a, this is a prophetic word. You will see it get tougher. You'll make, you, it'll get tougher. It'll get harder. And that's the will of God until you cry out to him. The same way the children of Israel, where he would just take his hand off. The Bible says where there's, where, where he, where there's pride, he, uh, there's opposition. Not, and it's from the Lord. That's interesting. I thought we just thought God was all, that is love. Just take your hands off. It's like having a teenager that they think they got everything. All right, go ahead, get your shoes, get your this. Go ahead, no, 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 that's my food too. No, 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 that, no, they got it. You got it? Okay, when you get it, uh, Go ahead, you got it. You, you, you do everything. All of a sudden, it's like, I'm sorry for that. And uh, these are real words. This is real words. We're not here just to play church this morning. Um, we are the church. And the church is the light of the world. It's a city on a hill. And the church that does not have a light is no church at all. Father, we... Today we pause and we just say thank you. Thank you. Lord, any place that we've had an oh boy mentality, we say no more. Just tell them, no more. No more. We thank you for more than enough to meet every need. We thank you that through our hands and, and through our life, you would get glory. That generosity would define us as individuals, as a people, 
for your glory in this season. Father, we thank you that you are the source. And so we make that switch this morning. Places where we, and we give you glory. We just lift our hands to you. And we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right. Well, that was a... That was the Lord. That was good. Uh, that was um, so. I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Uh, you know, the Bible tells us uh, how you know you can look at different creatures, and they teach you a lot. You know, there's wisdom there, and so Proverbs, right? Ecclesiastes, written by written by Solomon. And uh, how many of you ever heard of consider the ant? Have you ever read that verse in Proverbs chapter six? Yeah. Um, and it talks about how consider the ant. So that you, he said, and let me just go ahead and read it. Um, he says, uh, you can be, oh, actually, I don't have it written down. Um, but he says, consider the ant. And so as I was thinking about that, the ants, you know, and I was thinking, you know why ants don't get sick? Because they have so many antibodies. <laughs> so. so the Bible says, consider the ants. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> terrible. Uh, you can email me at nschlegel at beyondchurch.org <laughs> with any jokes you would like me to share. Uh, antibodies. <laughs> so uh, we're going to consider the ant. And uh, anyway, praise the Lord. Um, let's, let's get into the word this morning. We are in a series called I Am or He Is. He is more than enough. He is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He is with us. He is for us. He is Jireh. He is Nisi. He is Rapha. This morning we're talking about Shalom. And we know we talked about Jireh, the one who provides more than what you see, learning to look with the eyes of our heart. We talked about Jehovah Rapha and, and how there was, uh, where he was, there was snakes biting these people. And so the Lord had Moses make a pole and put a snake on the pole. And we know Jesus hung on the pole so that what, what anything you put on that pole, the Bible says that by his stripes, he was beaten for, our, for us. And so whatever he was, the diseases, the sickness was put on him or put on the pole. So where do we put our diseases and our sickness? On the pole. And we received uh, communion and we've been receiving communion every week. Every week. Because this is covenant talk. This is who he is to us. This is who he is and what he's done, what he's done for us. We've been receiving communion and we, we saw that the body and the blood. You know, we don't we don't go to the blood and then the body. It's the body and then the blood. And the, it was the body that was crushed for us. Right. And so that's Rafa. And then last week we talked about Nisi, Jehovah, the Lord, Lord who is our victory, our banner, who, who's over us. He's it's what we fly under. It's, it's where we fight from. And we talked about fight, fighting from above and, and, and in prayer uh, and, and just drawing from a source that's bigger than our, our own self. Amen. And so this morning we're going to talk about uh, Jehovah Shalom, uh, which is the Lord, our peace. Uh, and, and so if you'll have your Bibles this morning, um, why don't we go ahead and jump to Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. You can hold your place there. Uh, we're going to read a, a good portion of Judges 6. Um, but before you do, uh, read that. Um, let, let, let's read Judges 6, 1 through 2, actually, first. It says this, in Judges 6, 1 through 2, uh, my Bible says again, uh, is the first word. Um, I don't think very many other ones. It says the Israelites, mine says again the Israelites. Um, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years, he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountains, clefts, caves, and strongholds. Um, and they bought food, uh, uh, freeze-dried food for two years. <laughs> and built a bunker. And moved to the country. Went solar. And hid their kids and their wives. That's a, it's kind of funny a little bit, but this is 
where things can sound oppressive, even think that this is a place that I think I could sustain myself. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't get for food if the Lord directs you. That, that's on you. I'm just asking you, which voice is speaking? Is it a spirit of fear or a spirit of one that, that that's important to know? Important to know. Uh, but I, I, think you, I, I don't think you, you don't have a water bottle, bottles of water if you're going to be in a desert either. You know, I mean, I don't have any stores of anything, but hey, you do you. All right. If the Lord was to direct me, I'd get it. He hasn't. All right. Um, but praise the Lord. Anyway, and so I wanted to jump on in verse 1 there. And <clears throat> they've been signed out. I hate that. Why? <laughs> I'm not even going to try this morning. Um, and I think I know what it is now because la- last time she's like, no, it's still the original. But we're going to let it be. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead and go to, uh, let's go to Judges chapter 2, verses 18 through 19. This will set up what's been going on, uh, and really the whole story of, the, or the, all, the whole book of Judges, right? So, you know, there's, every book of the Bible has a specific purpose for which it was written, and um, especially the epistles, directing to different things. Judges, uh, all of the books, not just the epistles. But the book of Judges, if you see verse 18, it says, Whenever the Lord raised up a judge, verse 18 of chapter 2, whenever the Lord raised up a judge for the Israelites, he was with that judge and saved them from the hands of their enemies. So this is once they've come into the promised land, but now they've, they've walked away from the things of God, and God loved them. So they would rebel, they would repent, God would send a judge, they would deliver, and then they would kind of do the process all over again. But uh, it says this, so whenever the Lord raised up a judge for the Israelites, he was with that judge and, and saved them from the hands of their enemies. While the judge was still alive, for the Lord was moved with pity by their groanings and under those who oppressed them and afflicted them. But when the judge died, the Israelites became even more corrupt than their fathers, going after other gods to serve them and bow down to them. They would not give up their evil practices or stubborn ways. And so then we got, we'll go to chapter 6, and we saw that, again, the Israelites, so this isn't the first time, this is again, he would raise up a judge. There's actually 12 judges that are, that are spoken of, six of them that are spoken of, in depth of. You might have remembered Samson or you might Gideon. Or, okay, uh, We're going to talk about Gideon this morning. Um, <clears throat> but if you go to all the way to the end of the book, Judges 25, or excuse me, 21-25, it says, and in those days there was no king, and everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Interesting. No king. Let me ask you this. Do you have a king? What's his name? Jesus. How do you know if you have a king versus you have a president? Or you are, we, this is a, this is a big thing. We're in the body of Christ. We have, we're under the lordship. We're in the kingdom of God. We've been translated out of a kingdom of darkness and been translated into the kingdom of light. Okay, it's not a democracy. It's not a republic. There's no voting that goes on. There is a king of kings and a lord of lords. And one day, every knee will bow. Like, there will, he, he's not, there will be no choice. In other words, you will bow. Um, and, and right now, how do I know if I have a king? Is if I bow. If I bow. Are you bow? Do I bow? Do I bow to what he says, or is it like this verse 25 of 21 there, where it says that everyone just does what they want? Do what's right in my own eyes. This right here is the word of God. This is the authority for my life as a child of God. You can't be a Christian, I'm going to say this again, and not acknowledge this as authority. You cannot be a Christian And not acknowledge this as authority. What you have there is a false hope. You and I saying, well, I'm going to believe this part, but not that part. You're picking and choosing and believing whatever you want to console your own soul. And that's garbage. It's deception. Now, you might not like that, but that's what he says. That's what this says. And that's where the belief on Christ even originated with it's people that would say they call themselves a Christian from this, this foundation, this solid rock of truth. Heaven and earth will pass away, but these words will never pass away. I'm not here this morning to do a, a, a message 
on why the Bible is valid and all of its proof historically, uh, doctrine, prophecy, all of those kind of things. But it's important that you and I would hold this a- a- as final authority, and only then do I have a king. And only then can I draw from that kingdom. Only then can I fly under that banner, fight under that banner, and him fight for me. We talked about that when he flies in and that banner flies in, those A-10 warthogs, or, or you see the F-16, you know, back in the World War II when those planes were a little slower, you could see on the underneath sides of the wings there would be, a, be a, a, like some kind of design. If you were over there and you saw a swastika, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be real thrilled when you saw a bunch of swastika if you're American or, or al- our allied troops when they're coming in and flying low. You're like, uh-oh, and now they're turning around. What are you thinking? Oh, great, they're coming back for some supplies? No, you're like, uh, uh-oh. uh <laughs> Anyway, so we see in Judges 2 that the re- what was going on, uh, the Lord would raise up judges, deliver them, and yet they would go back to their own ways, right? And then the Lord would deliver them, and then God would be like, okay, it's going to be good this time. And then they went even worse. And what ended up happening, verse 25 of, of Judges 21, they just decided they're going to do what they want to do, when they want to do it, how they want to do it, they'll be their own God. They'll be their own kings because there was no, somebody tell me, there was no king. Well, let's go back up there. Judges 21, verse 25. There was no king. It's not up there yet. But where there is no king, where there's no king, you'll do what you want. Because there was no king. Um, Man, I'll tell you, it's important that we get a king and we keep a king. And it's the king. It's why we're doing this series, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the I am uh, the Lord. All right. And so uh, let's go back down to Judges chapter 6. We're going to begin reading uh, in verse 11. And this is uh, the Lord, uh, or really Gideon. It's so cool that it, we, as we start uh, reading here, um, let's see here. Let's just go ahead and go to verse 11. All right. It says, um, oh, that's verse 7. I was wondering why that didn't look right. That's chapter 7, I mean. Here it is. Okay, verse 11, 611. It says, Then the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in, uh, here's the cool thing, under the oak. The angel came to the oak. Deer don't just come to the oak. Angels come to the oak. So this is a, this is a plug for all you hunters. It's coming up. If you want to meet with God, get near the oak, all right? <laughs> All right, so anyway, angel of the Lord came to the oak tree uh, that belonged to Joash the uh, Abezerite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to hide from the Midianites. So the Midianites, we had read, they had been really oppressive, and for seven years they were so oppressive they were taking all their stuff. They didn't just take their crops when they were full. They took their crops, their goats. They, they wiped them out to where they had nothing. I mean, for seven years, if you can imagine, every time you, you, you're planting your last seed, hoping that something, and here they come, and you're just to the place where you are so impoverished that the people are finally crying out to the Lord. And here's what's so cool. Um, the Lord shows up, and the Lord shows up to Gideon. And so Gideon is at, under this oak tree. He's, he's threshing wheat down in this hole instead of up on the hill where the wind could blow the chaff away. So he's working twice as hard with little results. Okay, this is important. Again, no king, twice as hard, little results. Okay? Um, verse 12, And the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. Uh, Please, my Lord, Gideon replied. And we're not going to talk about how he called him something that he didn't see himself or called those things that were not as though they were. Um, here we are. And, and again, the angel of the Lord, it's like it would be Jesus showed up. Okay? It was the Lord. It wasn't an angel. It was the angel of the Lord. Almost like you would have seen Melchizedek show up with Abram with, uh, when he won that battle with bread and wine, okay? Um, the same way, all right? And so here he shows up, and he's talking to him. And verse 13, um, please, my Lord, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, oh, oh hold on, let me go back, with, go back to verse 12. The angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, the Lord is with you. So he shows up, and he tells him, the Lord is with you. And, and, and he calls him a mighty man of valor. Then he says, please, my Lord, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, then why? Have you ever been there? Why? Well, you say this, and you say, this says this. Well, why? 
And why this? And why that? And why this? And why that? And why this? And why that? And, and, and why? And where? And why has all this happened to us? And where are all of, all of his wonders? Again, this is still verse 13. Where are all of his wonders that our fathers told us about, saying, he is, uh, has not the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hand of Midian. So he's saying, why, why, why? Do you know it's possible to be, live in, in, in the place that God designed you to be and still be out of the will of God? This is what's, go, this is what's going on. And, and, and why is that? Because they're unwilling to yield to the Lord's word. You can, be, you can come to church every Sunday and not yield to the word, and you can be in the place that God designed you to be and still be struggling day in, day out, struggling for victory, fighting battles that you shouldn't be fighting still. I mean, because you just were unwilling to yield to what the word of the Lord is. Deliverance comes, and it's like, okay, great. I mean, it could be something with eating, all right? How many of you ever have been there when the Lord directs you, okay, and he didn't stop directing you? It could have been, it could have been uh, with water. It could have been smoking. It could have been uh, some sort of tobacco. Stop doing this. But, or it could have been candy. It could have been cake. It could have been, could have been anything. I'm just talking about your body, what you put in your body. And the Lord dealt with you about this here. But then some time passes, and now you stop. You're just like, it's okay. I can, I can have that again. What, did he say that? Did the Lord say, go ahead and pick up that again? He's like, he dealt with you about it there, but now you're, now you're under stress, now you're whatever, now it's just comfortable, and now we're going to put that back in us, and then we're going to, this, this is the same thing that's happening. When we get, we be beat something, okay? I remember somebody talking to me about how they had some sores on the inside of their mouth, and they dipped, okay? And they were kind of concerned about that dip, right? And so they stopped dipping. Is dipping wrong? I don't know. You ask the Lord, not me. My body's the temple of the Holy Ghost, but I put McDonald's in it sometimes. <laughs> so I'm not here to sit and judge judge you or put coffee in it daily or whatever it might be or soda drinks or, or diet Mountain Dew or, <clears throat> or whatever it might be. Um, it's green, right? We like greens. Um, <laughs> well, here's what I'm saying. It's easy to listen to the word of the Lord in adversity. But in the place of peace, oftentimes that's when we release the word of God and take our own. And I'm just saying, let's, let's just stay with the Lord. Like, let's just stay with him. Let's just go from glory to glory to goodness to goodness. That's his design for you and me. Now... I guess I kind of got off there a little bit. I don't know how I got into that other than here that he's saying, where are you at? What's going on? The Lord, you've delivered us. You've forsaken us. And it actually wasn't the Lord that forsaken, that forsook the children of Israel. It was the children of Israel that forsook the Lord. And I, I, I guarantee you, you can look in your own life and you can see where you and I forsook the word of God at, and and. You, whether it's through the words of our mouth, because the Bible, so I'm walking contrary to what the Lord says, and the Bible tells us in James that we steer our lives by our words, so you want to, it might not just be what I'm doing, it might be how I'm talking, but you can look, and you can ask the Lord, well, what's going on here, and you know he'll talk to you, he'll show you, and you can make that adjustment. Now, some people don't like this teaching because that means there's responsibility, and especially in this, you know, 20 years ago, this talk was a whole lot easier because there wasn't participation trophies handed out every week. But for 20 years, we've been in this culture for 18, 15 years. And, and, and some people, have you ever seen this video? I think it was on TikTok where uh, if your dad says it's okay to, to lose, he's, this is a coach. This coach is talking to the little league team. Hey, if your dad, I'm just telling you, if your dad says it's okay if, if you it doesn't matter if you win or lose, it's, it's okay. Let me tell you, your dad's a loser. <laughs> Telling all the kids, and it's pretty funny. But there, there, there are a few people, even in, these, in, in, the, in the 20 years of handing out, you know, you showed up, here's the trophy, that, um, that, that still have held to, that ain't right. 
And it isn't right. Because it's not truth. And it, not, I'm not saying for showing up. That's a half the battle anymore. Get, show up, right? Um, but let's, let's go on. This is, not, this is not just a soapbox, by the way. <laughs> this is the truth. That we have to do something with what we hear. Thank you, Lord. All right, so we're back to Judges chapter 6, verse 14. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength that you have, and now he has strength because the Lord is with him. He showed up and said he's with you. And save Israel from the hand of Midian. Am I not sending you? Verse 15, it says this, that <clears throat> Please, my Lord, Gideon replied, How can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the youngest of my father's house. And here's, here's how he answered how. How? I'll be with you. This is how. I'll be with you. I will be with you, the Lord replied, and you will strike down all the Midianites as one man. That's a, that's a powerful, powerful thing. Go, go with me to Isaiah 57, 20 through 21, just so you can hear, um, again, the word of the Lord yourself, what I was talking about earlier. But the wicked are like the tossing sea. They are like the talking sea, tossing sea. For it cannot be quieted. Its waters toss up mire and dirt. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. What are the wicked? Those who simply oppose what he says. That's it. Opposition. Do I, this, is a, this is a good test for you and me. Okay? I'm not talking that, that there are times in my life and I would say you would probably agree where you are walking in a certain way or you're doing something that you like doing. It might be dumping corn in the National Forest or something. You know, it's happened just to do some inventory. Um, I wasn't feeding the deer or, or hunt. I never hunted them over the corn, but I wanted to. And so have you ever done that where you did something and you're like, you're, you're set on just doing it. And then as you're going through, the Lord's just like, and you're just like, yeah, but there's bears on camera, and, and there's this, and I could get one, and, and other people are doing it, and, and the Lord just, but the Lord's dealing with you. And you know you're transgressing, and you don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Matter of fact, if somebody tells me about it, I'm kind of like, shut the front door. <laughs> shut the front, like, no, I don't, I don't want to hear it, because you're speeding, don't talk to me about this when you're speeding. Yeah. Don't talk to me about this when you're eating brownies. Okay? You're eating brownies and I'm dumping deer corn. <laughs> I'm eating organic, okay? <laughs> so I had to refrain and I don't even hunt over because of the temptation. If I go there, I want to maximize my effort and my time by at sweetening the deal. It's actually not, I actually put up signs that says, uh, this is not for this corn, not for deer. Any deer caught eating this corn will be shot. <laughs> what happens? It's not for deer. It's for the squirrels. But if you were to tell me what I'm doing is wrong because I decided this is how I'm going to do it, and on, in this portion of my life, I have no king, and I go there, and I'm here from the Lord while in the stand, and I get quiet because I'm not thinking about that, and all of a sudden the park ranger or the game and fish walks up, and I'm like, oh, shoot. <laughs> and I just, what do I do? And then he says, uh, you can get down from there. And then he takes my stuff and this and this. Well, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. <laughs> what? You're an idiot. Your decision brought down judgment. So that's what happened. Your decision. It's important that we understand who's king of our life. I don't, I don't know. This was not even in my notes talking about king. That, that zero. Uh, zero. It It matters. Because God's getting a lot of blame to a lot of things, and we're upset because we're being talked to in church about giving, about righteousness, about forgiving, about 
Now, if you are for forgiven everybody and everything's good, you're good. But if I tell you, forgive, or your Father in heaven won't forgive you, and that's what the Bible says, you better check yourself. You're like, you, now you have, well, the, well, you're doing this, and that's not what that really means, and da 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 No, that's what it says, honey. Make the adjustment, or stay in the storm. And the problem with storms is a lot of times there's casualties. And guess who's not to blame? That's right. But guess who gets the blame? Where are you, God? Didn't you do, you, where were you? Where are the signs that our fathers told us about? Where are this? Where's that? Where's this? Where's that? Let me tell you, where, where, where is the Lord your God? Is he here? Or is he just over there every once in a while? When I'm in trouble. Now, thank God he's faithful. Thank God his mercies are new every morning. But did you know the Bible says that he, he likes and, and cherishes obedience more than sacrifice? So back when they would bring sacrifices, he said, I just, I just want you to do what I say more than I want, to, I want to sacrifice because just my obedience, there's blessing in that obedience. Like, I, I, I'm thankful when my kids come and write me that, the, the card or, or tell me I, I'm sorry with, with tears or, or whatever. That's great, but I don't want that. I just, I wanted to go get ice cream because they cleaned the room and we're just hanging out and having a great time because you just did what I asked. I'd rather have that. Any, any moms and dads understand? This is how our Lord is. He would rather have us just do what he says and us experience his blessings. Okay? Now, um... Let's, let's go here. Uh, again, Judges 16, pick, or 6, verses uh, 17. Gideon answered. Again, how is he going to win? Because the Lord, he says, surely I will be with you. Verse 17, Gideon answered. If I have found favor in your sight, give me a sign uh, that it is you speaking with me. Please do not par- depart from this place until I return uh, to you. Let me bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, okay, I'll stay until you get back. So he comes and he's bringing this, this angel or the Lord, an offering. Angel of the Lord. And so Gideon went and he prepared a young goat. Now, you got to understand what we just read. They didn't have many goats. So him preparing a goat, he was like getting what he had. This is, this is kind of like the meal and the oil right here. This is the value of that. Okay? And he goes and gets the goat and unleavened bread and an ephah of flour. And he places the meat in a basket and the broth in a pot and he brings them out to present to him under the oak. Again, under the oak. Underline that, circle that, check it for acorns. All right. <clears throat> the angel of the Lord said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened bread, lay it there on the rock, and pour out the broth. And Gideon did so. Then the angel of the Lord extended the tip of his staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the unleavened bread, and the fire and fire flared up from the rock, consumed the meat, and the unleavened bread, and the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. And then Gideon was like, uh, yep, that's the Lord. <laughs> like, yeah, I think I just saw the Lord. <laughs> and when Gideon, verse 22, when Gideon realized that he was the Lord, he said, oh, Lord God. Oh my, or we would have said it like this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I just saw the Lord. And he was freaked out. Why? Because no man could see the Lord and live unless the Lord had mercy on him so no one could see the Lord and live so he's freaking out because I just saw the Lord I said is this you Lord and then it is you Lord stay so I can look at you a little longer I'm in trouble and the Lord says hey to him um, peace be with peace uh, be with you do not be afraid for you will not die he's not talking about a battle that's to come he's just talking about God his mercy towards him. Don't be afraid. I'm not killing you. I never came to kill you. I came to redeem you. That's why I've came all this time. I didn't come to make your life hard. I came so your life would be blessed. I didn't come. Like, we gotta, we gotta have that understanding. And then here's what the, this, this passage, Jehovah Shalom. And so Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it, the Lord is peace. The Lord is peace. To this day it stands there. So he built an altar that said, the Lord is peace. He, he realized the peace of the God is peace. He wants to be with me. 
is what he saw there. He wants to be in, in my, he doesn't, he's not coming to kill me. He's coming to redeem me. And then he said, go and go with me. How do I know? Because I'm going to be with you. So this is, this is where peace comes from. It doesn't come from the absence of adversity. It comes from the understanding that God is with me and greater is he that's with me than anything I face in this world. And from that place, I love Psalms 23, how it talks about even though I, I go through the, sh- the, the valley of the shadow of death, I don't fear the evil because I know what? You're with me. This is where peace, peace comes from. I want to define peace this morning. Uh, and you've probably heard, heard this, but let's just let this in this morning. This word shalom, Jehovah shalom, or shalom is, is the Hebrew word for peace, but it means more than what we just think of peace. Peace, it's not, a, it's not a ceasefire. Like, you know, peace in Jerusalem. Like, peace in Jerusalem means a truce, or like we're not firing anymore, but yet we're still at war. Have you ever been there? I just want peace in my relationship. Okay, sorry, sorry, or just, yet, but yet there's, there's still, yeah. just because you stop shooting doesn't mean there's peace. Okay, but here's peace, shalom, means complete, it means soundness, right? In other words, you can be in the, in the storm, uh, you ever seen those capsules that where they would go across the ocean and, these, and, and they have it to where they can seal the hatch so they can handle the 24, 35, 40 foot seas and there's like a capsule they can put a sail up but then they can basically lock it down, you know, and as long as they can keep that sealed, they can stay afloat, Right? And soundness, welfare, health. Now, this is important that when we realize that God is Jehovah Shalom, it's completeness, nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken. Soundness, welfare, health, prosperity, peace, quiet. I love this one, friend. Friend, peace with God, especially in covenant relation. This is what it means This is what that word peace means. It doesn't just mean everything's perfect. It means that I have a friend in God who I'm in covenant with. This is is how the Strong's defines that. And where you see that, you'll see peace. And where this is Hebrew, shalom. It's where there wasn't any other language that used this word. Shalom was a Hebrew word. And a Hebrew was a children of God word. A children of God word, how did they become the children of God? Because God made a covenant with them. So when they would say shalom, they would say friend of God, child of God, he's in covenant with you, so you're sound, you're complete, you're whole. This is how they would greet one another. Shalom, shalom. They still do this, or shalem, shalom, shalem, shalom. They, they greet each other, they, and they make a declaration You are a friend of God. God is a friend of you. And he's in covenant with you to bless you, to redeem you, to complete you, to restore you, to keep you. He's in covenant to be with you. He says this. He says, they are my children, the children of Israel. He's never going to break that covenant. So he deals with the children of Israel. He deals with the world. And he deals with the church. He still keeps them as what? The apple of his eye. He keeps them as his people. Why? Because he's in covenant. He'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You're mine. This word shalom is more than like, oh, peace. In the New Testament, we see it's translated in Greek, Irene, but shalom, the Lord who is our peace, the Lord who is my peace. I realize that he's my friend. He came as a friend, and he came as a covenant friend, and he said, I'll go with you, and we'll fight like one man. So he said, you'll go like one man. And he, he went and got about 34,000, so he looked good. And the Lord's like, you got way too many. Maybe like get down to 300. Thank you, Lord. So <clears throat> this, is, this, is, this is good. This is good. So how, if God is peace, how do I walk with peace? How do I walk with him? Because I know I can... I can be in his promised land and not be part of his promised plan. Like, I can have problems everywhere I look. Well, how do I get into the place where I stay with him so I can go through instead of just stay stuck? There is a way. 
And the Bible tells us how, and we're going to go here uh, today, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, and, and then we're going to spend a, quite a bit of time in Romans chapter 8. This is such a powerful passage for you and me. But here in Romans 5, 7, it says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. So this is what's interesting. If you were to keep on reading, well, let's keep on reading on, uh, back in Judges, and then we'll go to Romans 8. Just stay, just keep, stay in Romans 8. Let me just go to uh, Judges here. So we see that, so Gideon built an altar to the Lord and called it, the Lord is peace. So to this day, that altar stands. Verse 25 and verse 26 says, on that night, the Lord said to Gideon, take your father's young bull and, set, uh, and the other bull and tear down your father's altar and cut it down and, and altar, or not altar, but offer to me this sacrifice. So most of the places that the sacrifice in the altar was built was where? After the battle was won. After they crossed the Jordan River. After he said, hey, uh, they're still oppressing you. They're all camped right there. And they're coming to take all your stuff. And it's harvest time right now. And all that you have, they're coming to get it. He was trying to get it early. I can, I can imagine, uh, I don't know if you know about wheat, but him getting the wheat just a little early. You know, to where it's not quite ready for harvest, but it's, you gotta get, it's like getting the corn on the cob before the raccoons do. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Y'all don't have gardens, okay? You, you, you got to pick it when it's like, you wish you could give it, leave it another day, but if you don't pick it now, the raccoons are going to get it. So you pick it then. And, and so he's got the wheat. He's in this time of wheat. He, the Lord shows up to him, and the Lord's like, I want you. I know they're right there. I want you to worship me now. There's a battle yet to come, but I just want you to worship me now. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but if I give up, the, the, these are my last bowls. This is it. Like, what? I want you to worship me now. Why? Because we are to walk by faith and not by sight. How are we, you and me, to walk? By faith. What is faith? Faith is what God says. You and me coming under what he says. Faith, the Bible tells us, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So what, how do I walk by faith? Hear what God says and then walk by that. Or order my life or take a step according to the word of God. Lord, what do you say about this? Well, I, I say that I want you to take that. Okay, I take that in the name of Jesus. This is just, I'm not, I'm talking, let's say you're supposed to take a, a, a vitamin or, or a prescription or whatever. You get with the Lord and ask him what, what he says to you, because here, here's the deal. He's not going to take you to a place that you can't walk with him. He says you, you were to walk by faith, not uh, dive by faith, not leap by faith. So there will be a time that he might say, I want you to, Blah, blah, blah. He might tell you, I want you to do this. Okay, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do that in the name of Jesus. I'm going to do that under the authority of my king. I'm going to do that with him. Lord, do you still want me doing this? Uh, yep, I want you still doing that. Okay, well, will you let me know if you want me, if you change your mind? Because I, I would really like to walk by this word and not this word. But this is where faith comes, by hearing and hearing the word of him. So there's, this, is, this is why it's so important for us to hear from the Lord Otherwise, we could say, well, Judas went and hung himself. Go and do thee likewise and make it say whatever we want. But the Lord will speak to you. This is also why it's important to, to recognize his voice. When you, the more you're in this, the easier it is for you just to... Okay? But we're going to talk, about, uh, talk a little bit here. Romans chapter 8. So, here is how you and I walk with peace. Whose peace? Jehovah Shalom. This is how we walk with him. Romans 8, 5 through 7. For those who live according to the flesh have a mindset. They set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law Indeed, it cannot. So, talking about kingship, since we got, up, got that way this morning, you know why we struggle to yield to his, that word? is because I'm led with these eyes. When I'm led with these eyes instead of his word, I'm going to struggle to submit to what he says. I want you to do this. Yeah, but Lord... I only have one cake and one jar of meal, or 
uh, but yeah, but Lord, or one thing of oil and one thing of meal. Like, I, oh, we're going to, that, that's all I have. Yeah, but Lord, do you not see? Lord, do you not see? Lord, do you not see? He sees. <laughs> you might just write that down. God sees. If he, he says because he sees. He sees. And, and so here he says this, that, but those who have their mind set on the things of the flesh. It, it matters how your mind is set. Did you know that? It matters because how you set something is how, how you operate by. How many of you have a clock? In our kitchen, uh, we have a, a clock. Anybody still use clocks? Okay, cool. A few people still use clocks. Um, this clock is not a round clock. Uh, it's one on our, our oven. I hate that clock. <laughs> you know why I hate that clock? Because that clock you have to set often and it runs fast. No, slow. It runs slow. So I don't know if it's a half of a second slow, maybe. Half a second. But a half a second over the course of a while causes you to run late. Why? Because you are governing your life by how something is set. So I'm making decisions. Like, oh, I got time to finish making that cup of coffee. I can be there because look at what time it is. It's the, it's the one place in our house. It's blue, blue, glowing, digital. You can see it across. It's right there. I know what time it is because of how it's set. The problem is it's deceptive. And you know what? When you're in my life is set by what I see, I'm going to struggle, not just struggle. The Bible says that I'm going to walk in and receive a whole lot of death in my life. That's what it says here. It says, a mind that's set on the, on the things of the flesh, he says it's death. That was verse 6. For to, to, for to set the mind on flesh, or what you can see, natural things, he says is death. But to set the mind on the spirit is what? Life and peace. So have you, have you ever been there where like you, you don't even have to set the clock anymore? You, you just wake up at 6 o'clock, you're up. Because every morning, uh, you, you got to be out the door and you want to sleep in Saturday morning. But it, 6 o'clock comes, you wake up and you have to go back to sleep. Anybody know what I'm talking about? If you have that day off, you don't have to set it. You once had to set it, but now you don't have to set it because now it's set internally. What's set internally of you? Is it the mind set on the flesh? Or is it a mind set on the Spirit of God? And then it won't be, you know, it'll be weird for you to, to think, man, uh, I, I didn't wake up at 6. It, it would be weird for you and I to think. I, I remember on Wednesday night, Mona said, it just, it just weirds me out. She said, it just, it just weirds me out that, that we say we believe God, and we say and we see what he says, and we know that our words are supposed to be in agreement with him. We believe, therefore we speak. Yet I hear so much talk that is not what God says and so much yuck. I, she said, I have to leave sometimes conversations and it just weirds me out because I don't want to allow those things into my heart. I don't want to let somebody else reset my clock. My, I don't want to let somebody else to give me a reset isn't that what they're trying to do? The global reset. Aren't they trying to do that again? They're trying to give you a reset, or another reset, another something to where you would look at this and look at here. Let's start counting here. And let's look here. And let's look here. Well, how about you and I set our mind on the things of the Spirit and experience life and peace and, and realize that that clock is deceptive in the kitchen and it's causing you to run late and it's causing you to be frustrated and, and just, just stop setting that clock don't use that clock anymore. Start setting the clock of your inner man. What, what does the Lord say? And you'll find that what, after you had to set it for a while, you set it for a while, you set it for a while, no longer do you have to set that clock, but you just respond from that clock. Now the clock what was external is now internal, and we're going, thank you, Lord. When I don't see enough, Father, thank you that you supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory. You said that if I bring my tithes and offerings in the store, there would be more than enough for me there. Father, there's direction. There's when, when I hear, the, uh, oh, this is going on, not in this house, not in this house, 
because you said your people would experience life and life more abundantly. Father, thank, well, this is going on and there's new cases and this is da, da, da. not in this house, not in Beyond Church, because you came to give us life and more abundantly. We, re, we refuse that in the name of Jesus. Why? Because you paid for it at the cross, on the pole. So we put Corona or Rona or blah, 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 whatever it might be on that pole. And we look to the pole instead of the, some reports. This is ridiculous. And if you and I are under that king's word, you will not be able to carry any light. You won't, go, you won't be able to walk where, where Jesus left his disciples and said, Now you go into all the world and preach the gospel. Lay hands on the sick. No, there's six feet. I think they're moving it to 12 now. This is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Well, let's just check. Let's just see what they're saying now. You know, God hasn't changed what he's been saying for thousands of years. <sighs> Come on. Oh, my rod. Come on, right? So you got to have a mindset on the things of the Spirit. Look at uh, John 6, 63. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. Wow. It's the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. Well, let's just look at this and let's do this. And now because I see this, now we're going to make this decision. We're going to make this decision. We're going to make this decision because this is what I saw. Lord, what do you say here? He's like, um, first of all, I want you to know I'm out ahead of the game. And the child of God is led by the Spirit of God. So that just, I want you to know that I'm not pushing you, and I'm not trying to direct you from behind. But I'm out ahead of you. A child of God is led by the Spirit of God. That means what you need to know, if you'll spend time with me, you don't have to ask me about this, 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 this. I'll get it to you. I'm not behind. I'm not behind. The, the reality is, when 2020 went on and whatever hit, a lot of us seemed like, oh, well, what, what are you saying about this? And I was like, I'm not. So, but you're going to make decisions because of what you're seeing instead of just staying with what my word says. I'm just telling you, as the church, we missed a lot of it. We missed it a lot. Because we allowed us to talk to and ask from what I see Instead of, say, going back and just sticking with, Lord, I'm just going to be led by what you say, period. I'm not saying stick your head in the sand and not look. And, you know, some people, you're getting really upset with me right now. But this is the Word of God. And the Word of God works in my body. It works on my finances. Uh, the, the promises of God are for you and me now, not just eternal salvation. This is what Roman 8, Romans 8 is all about. He talks about how we set our minds on the things of the Spirit. And what happens is, it's not just it's life. And he talks about how our, life, our bodies will be raised to life. And this is the hope of salvation. But he says, also, I'm giving you the Holy Spirit to help you here and now so that you could live life. That you could live. It's not well, one day I'm going to live. It's, it's not that I'm going to be raised to life where this body, when it dies, it's going to go to heaven. Yeah, that's a portion of it in salvation. But when he talks about the Holy Spirit, he said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. John 14 and John 16. Jesus said, I'm going away so I can send you a helper for what you need here. Yes. Yes, we have to understand time. And that even in death, there is no death for those who are in Christ. Okay? And it's not the end. It's actually into, okay, into heaven, into uh, eternity, okay? But, but we also have to understand it's not just there, it's also here. According to the word. According to the word. And this is how we're to operate. But so often we're operating, even as the church, according to what we see, and then trying to put the word on what we see. Take the word at the word, and it'll change all of those things. So he said, get a mindset. Set the clock. Set the clock. Set the heart on what does God say. How are you going to respond? By the Spirit. 
What's the spirit? Well, John 6, 63. It is the spirit who gives flesh. The flesh is no, oh, excuse me, I, that's that dyslexia. <laughs> it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words I have spoken to you, they are what? Spirit and life. So how do I set my mind or how do I set my heart? How do I, in a, set, in a sense, set the clock on the things of the spirit? I set the clock by setting my heart and my mind on the things of God or the word of God. Amen. This is I, I, Why? Because his words are spirit. So if I'm going to set the clock and I'm going to respond not according to what I see, but I'm going to respond according to the spirit, I'm going to have to put the spirit or the word of God in. That's how I set my clock. I set my clock, I set my heart, I set my mind. And actually, that's what it is. It's not a clock, it's a mind. Your mind set on the things of the flesh is death. The mind set on the things of the spirit is life. How do I set my mind? John 6, 63. The word of God is spirit and life. Wow, that's so cool. I read, I, I quoted to you John 14, uh, it says, I will ask the Father, John 14, 16 through 17, I'll ask the Father to give you another helper, to be with you forever. And even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, why? Because they don't see him. The world operates by, he says, he says, as a child of God, you're to be led by the spirit of God, which is the word of God. The, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. He's going to be a helper, but the world can't receive them or receive him. Why? Because they can't see him. The world can't receive the Holy Spirit because they can't see him. They operate by how they see. You and I are to operate by what we hear him say or what we believe. Your and my help doesn't come by what I see. Matter of fact, the Lord had to open our eyes to see into the spirit realm. You remember he said, Lord, open their eyes so that they might see. There are more of those with us then against us, and their eyes were open, and they just saw heavenly hosts and hosts of those who were with them. We look with the eyes of our heart. We look with the eyes. When Paul prayed for the church at Ephesus, he didn't say, Father, give them a breakthrough. He said, in Ephesians chapter 1, he said, I pray that the eyes of their understanding, the eyes of their mind would, would, would be enlightened and that they would know the hope to which they're called, that they would know the inheritance, the power. They would, they, they would see something, that they would know that their eyes of their mind would be in agreement with what his word says. Yeah. And we see in, in Corinthians that, that the enemy likes to blind the minds of unbelievers lest the light of the gospel would shine into their hearts. Blind the minds. So the enemy's goal is to blind us. To blind us. And how does he blind us? By us looking to what we see instead of what... This is, this is the truth. Why, could the, the, why does the world not... Even in the church, okay? Oftentimes in the church, the Holy Spirit and, and, and tongues is often fought against because... It's, it's, you don't see it. But here's the craziest thing. Salvation, you don't really see either. And a lot of people, you don't see it at all. But you give in your heart. Like, you're like are you a Christian? You're, like, but yet we're like, oh, no, once saved, always saved. But, but yet we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit, and we're like, oh, yeah, but it, it doesn't make sense. We're not using the same laws here. Like, we got a different jury out for this, each one. I don't, I don't get it. But the reason that the Holy Spirit, and oftentimes the church, and maybe you're in this place, and this is way strong of a word this morning, but oftentimes it's because I have set my mind on the things I see instead of the things of the Spirit. Instead of the Word of God. They couldn't receive Him because they don't see Him. They don't know Him. You know Him, for He dwells with you. Hmm. How, do you. how do you know everything's going to be okay? Because I'm with you. How do you know? It's what he tells Gideon. I'm with you. Hey, Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm going to send somebody, and he's going to be with you. And the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is going to live and dwell inside your body. And if he gave life to him, will he not also give life to your mortal body? This is Romans 8. Hey, 
John 14, uh, verse 26 and 27. But the helper, again, he's describing who he left with us. Okay, The helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He's going to teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. It's amazing. What he wants, what his, his job description is to remind us of what God said so that we can walk by faith and not by sight because a child of God is to be led by the Spirit of God. So this is why it's so important to, to be fed by the Word of God because this is spirit and life. Your helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things, bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. I know I read that already. I read it again. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, so he can be with you. And because he's with you, how do I know that I'm going to win? Because I'm with you. How do you know that it's going to be okay? Because I'm with you. Oh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah, my covenant friend. He's going to remind you all that I've said unto you. Peace I leave with you. Now, one day you're going to have peace? No. Peace I leave with you. A covenant friend I leave with you. A covenant partner I leave with you. Completeness, soundness, prosperity I leave with you. Health, wholeness I leave with you. I love this nursery rhyme that when I was a kid, my mom had um, this nursery rhyme book, and it was Christian uh, nursery rhymes. It was Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men put Humpty Dumpty back together again. A little different because it was the king's horses and it was the king's men. The king sent some that had an answer to what the world didn't have a problem to. I remember reading these nursery rhymes and it was the word of God. It was rewritten nursery rhymes that said something from what God's perspective. God, is there anything impossible with him? No. What are you, but, but that's with him. That's with him. God, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? He said, where are you? Well, the only reason, God's with us, his children. But the question is, are we with him? Thank you, Lord. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. This is verse 27 of John 14, John 14, 27. He says, not as the world gives do I give to you. He says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So this is where peace starts, right here, by what you and I will let in, by you what you and I fix our, our minds on. This is why the Bible tells us in Proverbs 4, guard your heart. In this season, in what's going on in the world, there's deception everywhere. You, you don't know what to believe. There's all kinds of half-truths everywhere, and that's what makes them believable, right, because they're palatable. Right, and then they'll stretch it too far. I mean, it's crazy. So what do you what do you got to do? You got to guard your heart. You got to guard your heart. You don't need another YouTube video that tells you about this or this or that or blah blah blah. I'm telling you, you better shut down some TikTok, shut down some face junk. You better shut down some stuff because it's filled with people sharing a bunch of junk, and it's not producing life. That's how you recognize a seed, by the fruit that it produces. And the fruit, is it producing fruit that's after the flesh or after the spirit? Galatians 5, 22. Like, this is how we got to look at this. This is just growing up in the Lord. Like, when you become, so many times we think getting saved is, that's all there is to Christ. No, that's the beginning. This is the starting line. When you made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, this is where you start. And then we grow up and we learn to follow him and we're led by him. And he leads us into all the good things, according to Ephesians chapter 2, that he's prepared for us in advance so that we could walk in them. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. But you and I have to be taught the word for that. Yes. Otherwise, we're just going to live according to the flesh, according to the eyes, and you'll look no different and you'll have no solution to the, all of these things. The answer is inside of you, where the Lord would remind you of His Word. It was always His Word that brought deliverance. Every time, this is one of the things, you can, you can take this to the bank. Every time that God moved or delivered, it was His Word. Every time. Amen. He's not changing. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It will still be His Word that delivers you and me. 
So what I, I don't need to see something different. I need to hear a different word. If I'm hearing the wrong word, I need to hear, Lord, what are you saying? Father, I'm asking. I'm going to get quiet here. And I know we, we, we could just end here, but I can't end just here just yet. Because I, what I really felt under assignment for and why I changed all of my notes this morning, just in 25 minutes, 45 minutes, I was like, oh, we have huddled this morning? Oh, shoot. For our serve team. If you're on the serve team, we have it all, all team huddle this morning, which means we just gather and we share some things. And I, anyway, and I, right before, it's like the Lord's like, talk about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I thought we were talking about peace. He's like, I am. Let me take you to Romans 8. 5 through 7 is what you had. Why don't you read all of Romans 8? Okay. Oh, my. We should just stay in Romans 8. We should just be in Romans 8. In Romans 8, he talks about how he's given us the Holy Spirit to pray when we don't know how to pray as we ought. So many times we're praying from our mind. We're praying from what we see. And he's saying, I've given you the Holy Spirit so that you, to help you to pray, to help you to pray. And what happens when, when we have the Holy Spirit, again, 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 14, 1 Corinthians 14 too. It says that when you pray in an unknown tongue, you're not praying to man. You're praying to God who's with you. So this is when you pray in an unknown tongue, praying in the Spirit, okay? This is, should not be a weird thing. This is something where you talk with the Lord. And in order to pray in the Spirit, this right here is unfruitful. <laughs> hmm. Interesting. When I'm struggling to set my mind on the things of God, what I need to do is sow to the Spirit. So I can sow to the Spirit in a couple of ways. I can worship, okay? But when I worship, oftentimes my mind is still busy about what's going on. Anybody experience that? Okay? So... My mind's busy and I'm thinking about this and I'm thinking about what deer stand I'm going to sit in. I'm thinking about how that's not working. I'm thinking it could be one of a hundred things, okay? And we're getting close to deer hunting season, so I'm using that. So I can sow to the Spirit through worship. I can sow to the Spirit through reading the Word. Have you ever driven somewhere and then you didn't remember where you drove for the last ten minutes? Okay, I'm not the only one. It's kind of scary. Somehow autopilot, or you just take the exit you normally take, and you were supposed to go this way, but you just on autopilot, and you're like, shoot, I missed the exit, okay? That, that happens. I can read the word, and that can happen because my mind is somewhere else. So the Lord said, I'm going to give you a helper. So he gave us the word, okay? And he, he says, if you want to get with me, Come and praise and worship and, and partner with me. I'll inhabit your praise. I'll inhabit your worship. But when, when you're not there, he's not there. Like when you're not in your worship, oh, oh Lord, I worship you. And I'm singing hallelujah, hallelujah, la fiesta, hallelujah, el trio, hallelujah. Well, you're not there. So you're singing. That's great. And I'm not saying, but... But you're singing, you're not there, so you're wondering, he's not there either. Like, he's where, you, where are you? He'd rather meet you over a taco than you and I to, to be fake. It's like, hey, get the queso too. I, I want some queso, right? I'll stick out my sticks, sizzle, flaming queso, all right? So I can sow to the Spirit in worship. I can sow to the Spirit in reading the Word. But one of the greatest ways, especially in a battle where I see so many other things, I sow to the Spirit by praying in the Spirit. Every believer has been given the Spirit of God. If you're born again, the Spirit of God lives on the inside of you. Right here. Praying in an unknown tongue and praying in the Spirit is just you and I yielding to this over this. Jesus baptized us in the Spirit. It's the difference between the Spirit within or the Spirit upon. And Jude chapter 120 tells us this. When we pray in an unknown tongue, we, we, we build ourselves up. What, what are we building up? Our spirit, man, because our mind is unfruitful. We're not praying to men. We're not, pr we're not praying according to what we see. We're talking to God. Amen. So we're getting inside solutions on the situation. And in Romans chapter 8, the Bible tells us that it, when we pray in an unknown tongue, that uh, he comes to our aid and our weakness to pray the way we ought to pray. 
so we get with him on the situation. God, where are you? He said, get with me, get with me, get with me. And so we pray in an unknown tongue. And so here's the, we've made it, man, I'll tell you, it's been so cool lately. Um, we've, had, we've had people get baptized with the evidence of speaking in tongues by coming up front. But here's what I saw in my heart today. Uh, we're going to receive communion and do what Gideon did, where we're going to praise God before any battle. You might be in a battle or whatever it might be, but we're going to declare Jesus as Lord by receiving communion this morning. But I saw this in my heart this morning. I saw us all standing up, and we're going to pray. We're going to worship the Lord in an unknown tongue. Now, you again, this is not for uh, to be crazy or to be whatever. The Bible tells us if you're going to pray without clarification, it, if I was to speak to you like, ho, bo, 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 you know, that wasn't even tongues. But if I was to speak babble to you, that would be... That would be unorderly, okay? But when there's a purpose to it, when there's a purpose to it. And so when you come together and we're, we're going to speak to the Lord, and I just had seen in my heart that God was wanting to get more people baptized with the Spirit this morning and right where you're at. Every time people were baptized with the Spirit, the hands didn't have to be laid on them. They just had to say, Lord, I want what's in me to be upon me, and I want to yield to the, the one who's in me that's greater than what I see. Show me how to do that. I yield myself to you, and as you yield yourself, it'll, he'll fill your mouth, and you'll begin to pray in the Spirit. And then in your own quiet time, you can sing in the Spirit, and you can pray in the Spirit, and you can do it loudly, and I can interrupt this, and I can yield to this, and I can reset to where I'm going this way instead of this way. And the more you keep that clock that keeps on getting off, reset, 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 reset. It won't be long until what you operate from is right here instead of everything out here. And then out of your belly will be flowing a river of living water instead of having to always be looking for water. So let's stand this morning. Um, and I know we're going to go ahead and begin to pass out communion. Thank you, Lord. Let's just, I, I don't know, maybe should we should we sit down for communion? Is, is it too hard? No? Okay, stand. And uh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's just thank the Lord this morning. You go ahead and bring that forward, please, and uh, begin to pass that out. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Begin to pass it down the rows. Thank you, Lord. As you pick up the bread and as you pick up the, uh, the cup this morning, thank you so much. Um, I want you to see a covenant friend. He was sitting with his disciples. He was sitting with the ones that he loved when they received communion that night at the Lord's Last Supper. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to let that pass out. Hallelujah. Paul said, pray in the spirit, pray with your understanding also. The Bible also said, I'm going to give you just, while we're, while we're receiving this, I'm going to give you just some verses on the Holy Spirit, okay? <clears throat> when the, when, if you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there's a passage that says, when you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more does our Father in heaven? He said, if you ask for a, a piece of bread, or is your father going to give you a stone? Or if you ask for a fish, he's going to give you a snake. And he, he says, no, but if you ask, he's going to give you what you ask for. How much more will the Lord give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So that's a powerful thing to know that God wants, God wants you and I to have his help. Okay? God wants you and I to have his help and to be able to walk in light and to walk by faith and not by sight. That's what God desires for you and me. Okay? Uh, he... One of the things, though, when, you, when you're baptized in the Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, it's for your edification. It's uh, to pray out mysteries. The Bible tells us, we just were reading that, to pray out mysteries. But one of the things for you and I, it's to also pray out mysteries that you would understand. 
So the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians, when you pray in an unknown tongue and you speak to men, not or speak to God, not to men, he said, pray that you would interpret. There are some things that you have to have a direction for, clarification for, stop, go, yes, no. Uh, and so he says, when you pray in the Spirit, ask him for the interpretation. So in your time of praying in the Spirit, in your prayer closet, okay, in, in your quiet time, where you begin to just magnify the Lord, the Bible says when we pray in an unknown tongue, we give thanks well, right? Which when we give thanks well, we just saw that this morning, we're calling two fish and five loaves enough, right? But we're giving thanks well, we, we, we're doing that. But he says that we pray out mysteries, and so there's mysteries that are prayed out. And so when you, I've got to slow down. When you pray in an unknown tongue, he said, ask for the interpretation. So while you're in your prayer closet giving thanks well, Father, thank you for the interpretation of this time as I pray out your will. Because for me to walk in accordance to God's will, I have to release my will. That has to happen. That's how I also start praying in tongues. But also there's some, what natural steps do you have for me? I need to know. So I make that move and I make that move. And so I encourage you, I guarantee you this, if you realize that you can pray in an unknown tongue, ask the Lord for that interpretation, you'll pray in the Spirit a whole lot more. All of a sudden on the way to work, it's going to be because of what's going on, whatever, is, you'll be just praying in an unknown tongue, praying perfectly, praying out mysteries, praying out and asking the Lord for the interpretation on whatever it is that you need to know. And it might be, you might just get it, you might even, it might even come out to you where you would prophesy about it. And it's important to know this, that you should be prophesying, not just the stage. S declare a thing and it'll be established. Speak to the bones. Speak to, but I'll tell you, you speak from where, not from what you see. You speak from the inside. You speak from what, and this is why we sow here. And, but you might be praying in the spirit in the car, and 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 you and and you're praying, and you might be five minutes in and just giving the Lord glory. You're just driving and giving Him glory, and just praying. Hallelujah, Father, thank you. Oh, give you glory for my sons. Oh, Ramasha. And so I, in a sense, set the sail in the direction of my mind. I lift up my children in the name of Jesus. I don't know how to pray for them as I, I don't know how to parent them, but I parent best from prayer. So, and I begin to just let it flow out. Let God's plan flow out. And then I get this direction. Boom. And right, just, and I just pray that out in and I, understanding. And then I pray it in the spirit. And Paul said, I pray in the spirit and I pray in my understanding. But I pray in the spirit more than y'all. Why? Because he was up against so many different things, so many different times. He was the bulldozer bringing the, bringing the gospel into the world. And guess what? That's what you and I are to be doing. So we need to sow to the Spirit. And so before we receive communion this morning, I had just seen that in my heart, that we would just lift up a song uh, from, of the Spirit and that there would be a, a, just a release of a song in your lives, in our lives. It would be a song a different melody would, would, would take place and from this house, okay? But if you want to be baptized with the Spirit, just, Lord, thank you, and you just, I receive, the, I receive the Spirit this morning, and then you begin to just sing from here. You're like, oh, well, I don't know the words. They don't come from here. But you have to speak whatever you get. That's where we spend most of the time is the hang-up between here and here because we're so inundated by looking to everything like this. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, Rodney, um, will you sing in the spirit too with us in the mic? Uh, thank you, Lord. We're going to do that. And we're just going to take a, a minute or, or so here, maybe a little longer. We're just going to check the anointing, where the, where, the, where the Lord's at. This is also for in your own time. I know I'm taking some time. This is teaching time. But when you're, when you're in, don't stop what you're doing because you had a clock that told you I had to be here or do this or do that. Go with the anointing. In other words, the presence of God. So there's time in just a moment with the anointing. You can do more in the, in a, with the anointing in a moment than you could do in the next five years. In a service, you could do more with the anointing than just interrupting the anointing than you could do in the next 10 years at a church. And there'll be more that happen in a house in two years than what you could do in 10 years. And this is one of those houses. Because we're yielded. And God's wanting to use and work and help you. Isn't that cool? You have a shalom God, a covenant friend. 
the Lord Jehovah Shalom, my covenant friend who's fighting with you, here to help in any way, give you direction. So let's just do that this morning. If you're baptized and filled with the Spirit, I want you to begin to lift up uh, a prayer in tongues. If you were wanting that, you can. If not, you can just uh, pray in, uh, in your known language. We're just going to give God glory, all right? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Father. We magnify you. Sing a new song. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it out. Say Say So I want you to know, I want to work with you. I want to work with you in all that you do. Everywhere you go, every step you take, a new flow, and it's with me. A new song, a song of rejoicing, a song of victory, a song of I am who I am, and I will be who I will be. Bring me into what you thought was impossible. And you will hold a new understanding of who I am. More than words on a page or words from this pulpit, you will hold, you will know a rhema word where I pull back the covers and unveil to you who I am. Father, we receive that in the name of Jesus. We partner with you to see you. We bring you into in what looks impossible situations. And we just yield to the Spirit in those places, in those times. Oh, my job. Uh, I just saw you uh, praying in the Spirit before you go in just I just saw that just on your job just it's it's not it's not it's not a bunch of words it's just it's a yielding you just just it's a yielding and so you just you're moving you're walking you're led you're you're you're, you're in the right place at the right time you're protected thank you father thank you lord father we just thank you we receive that Thank you for protection. Oh, we just lift that up. We just come under your protection this morning. 
Maybe you've been uh, uh, filled with fear and you've been filled with uh, dread because of, of just different reports. Father, we come under your word this morning. Lift your hands if that's you to him where fear has been trying to grab a hold of you. And I, I speak to you, God did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. And so we release a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind over you in the name of Jesus, according to what the Lord said, according to what, Father, thank you for that. Thank you for the replacement of even that word, supernatural, just a, a healing of a mind, of those pathways that would, would have went straight to flight. Uh, straight to flight, but Father, thank you for just a standing uh, in a place of power and strength in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, today, we, we're, we're just so honored to be able to, to have something you've given us to declare who you said you are to us with this, this bread and this this wine or this juice, Father, that we get to declare you and who you said you are and who you said you are to us. We, we come into agreement with that today. And so we thank you for the body and, and, and the blood. We thank you for it. And today we receive and we magnify and we put up on, we thank you that it was us that put you on that pole. So anything that's in us or on us, we thank you that you took that on the on that cross. And so we thank you that by your stripes we are healed. You were bruised for us. You were beaten for us. And so we thank you for that. That our healing is upon you and we receive your body in honor of you fully today. In Jesus name. Take eat and that bread. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for just healing in bodies right now. Just as we received your body, there was just a, a, just a, just a, just a gentle reception of healing. It wasn't a striving. It was just a resting, mm, like breathing. Thank you, Father. And then we take this cup. You said it was a, a new agreement you were going to make with us where you're, you would pay the price, and you have paid the price. For our sins, we declare the blood of Jesus, covenant. We declare it to circumstances, and we declare it to you, our covenant friend, who fights for us, who fights with us. We receive it now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We honor you this morning be magnified in this house. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. You know, um, one of my prayers lately has been normal, supernatural, normal. Normally supernatural. Like just that you and I would be walking the things of this, just to be normal and not have to be long, like, ooh, we gotta get it figured out, but just like, just quicker than some new operating system on your computer, just that quick, just walking with and by the Spirit of God, and, and normal, just normally supernatural, that we would be His body, the same way the children of Israel, or not the children of Israel, His disciples were, it just, where things are just normal, it just seems, it just makes sense. It makes sense that God would do what he said he would do. It makes sense to lay hands on the sick wherever I'm at and then recover. It makes sense to bring deliverance and lay hands on, on somebody and release them of, of some spirit of torment in the mind. It makes sense, or whatever it might be, it just makes sense to preach the gospel. It just makes sense. Like, it's just a different set. It's a different mindset. It's by his spirit. Amen. 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 Well, you don't have to crunch those anymore. You can throw these in the garbage at the door. Um, and uh, hey, we love you guys. And uh, it's funny. Everyone's cracking them now. But that's, that's the truth, isn't it? In those quiet times, I, as a kid, I, I, even when I was a 40-year-old, sometimes they just find that in my hand. And uh, anyway, but you know, I'm going to close with this and then we're dismissing. 
as much as it is funny to do that in that moment, or not in that moment, but right now, it's really not funny to do that in the moment. And something that I've talked about the last three weeks is honor in this house. And uh, I have a note card to, to be reminded of it because uh, so this is a reset. The same way we're resetting some things in our, in our spirit to operate from here, we're resetting some things in this house. And that's honor. Honor for the Lord and honor for each other. Uh, you know, how we get up and how we respond. I understand, and you know, some people have you, it, bladder issues and things like that. I, this is not for that, okay? This is for those precious times, you know? Like if somebody's given their life to the Lord or if there's healing or there's a word of the Lord being spoken during the message even, then I, I'm, I'm aware that, God, I'm expecting to hear from you. I'm expecting and I came believing that others would hear from you. And so I, I'm going to honor the moment that, that where we sit before you. You know, I'm going to honor the one to the next and to the, to, to, to the other side. But ultimately, I'm honoring the Lord. And, and so I, I, I bring that up just because I do think that there needs to be a reset in the fact that I believe what will happen is we'll just see it like in Jesus' hometown where there was little honor, there was, he, there was little effect. But as we reset and we honor the Lord and we reverence Him and we recognize that we really do meet with Him, we're going to see a whole lot more. We're going to experience a whole lot more of Him in manifestation in this place. That sign that's above the door is not going to be above that door very much longer. It's going to be on this wall right here. So while we're in the sanctuary, on that balcony wall, so while we're in the sanctuary, we're reminded of our expectation is an invitation for God to move. We're not coming here to hear a message. We're coming here to meet with Him. I, 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 don't, have, I don't have what you need in myself. It, it's only what I carry in Him. It's only when we open up this and He accompanies his word. And so we're going to put that on there. We're going to put an overhead and paint that on there. If somebody, that's a plug. If somebody wants to help with that, we'd love that. We'll get it done. But if you feel like, hey, I, that, that's me. I want to help you, uh, trace that out and paint that on that wall. We're going to be moving that into here. Um, anyway, so excited uh, in my heart about all that God's doing. You know, this is something I want to leave you with is this. Where sin abounds, grace abounds more. There's more grace right now in today, which is God's favor towards you and me. God's strength towards you and me. God's giftings towards you and me. There's more grace today than there was yesterday. I'm telling you, there's to meet, the Bible says to meet every one of today's evil to desires or tendencies or even, and so even as I reset my mind, it's not by my own willpower. Father, thank you for the grace and the reset. The reset of my heart, the reset to, uh, and, and there's grace there. There's grace for parenting. There's grace for finances, wisdom for all of those kind of things. Grace. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys as you go today. Enjoy your uh, tomorrow. Throw something on that grill, and we love you. Uh, have a great weekend.